Hey, good evening, brothers and sisters. Are you okay? I know you are mute, so just uh, uh, wanted to greet you. I hope that everything is going well with you in your practices. I heard that two times a day you have lectures, so this is a very good condition, very good spiritual condition for you, and uh, not only for your blessing, but also for your life. You know, whenever there is a difficulty and problems, that is a sign for us that we need to offer more Changsang condition. So this uh, Divine Principle Lectures series that we are having that has been organized by BFD, by uh, uh, Reverend Randy. Uh, so this is really great opportunity for all of us that we can uh, grow and develop spiritually. So let's uh, have a short review of the previous session. As you remember that we discussed about faith. Faith is individually that to receive the Messiah, we need two conditions. One is faith and the other one was the uh, substance, foundation of substance. So, was the faith alone enough? If the faith alone was, not, was enough, we had an already ideal world. But the faith alone does not change this sinful world to an ideal world. So that's why we have two conditions. Faith and foundation of substance. Faith is individually you do it, right? You offer Changsan condition, 40 days Changsan condition, 7 days. You pray and that's your faith. Like uh, Noah, he built the ark for 120 years. That was the foundation of faith for him that God can work with that person. So we need to have a condition that God can use that condition and use us as his instrument and come to become closer to us. So without condition, God cannot come to us. God cannot uh, give us, you know, this is grace of receiving the Messiah. So let's talk a little bit more about the condition of indemnity to restore the loss of faith. So begin, God must choose someone, right? If you remember, to fulfill this task. So we, have a, we need a central person. We call this person a central person. If you remember, each one of you can be a central person. When you offer a Changsan condition, in that your paper, you write central person. So it means that each one of us, we are central person. Some of the central persons got called in history. Include what? Like Abel, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and the prophets, and Jesus Christ. So the responsibility of the central person is what? Whom God chooses is to fulfill a condition of faith that God is able to accept. This is a very important point, my brothers and sisters. To fulfill a condition of faith that God can accept it, is able to accept it without any accusation from Satan. So, you know, sometimes we are offering Changsun condition, but is our Changsun condition is sincere? Is wholehearted? Not all the time. So most of the time, God cannot accept our Changsun condition. Why? Because it's, the standard is low. We are praying, we are thinking about other things. Or when we are reading Hundoke, our mind is somewhere else. We read one page already, but we, we forgot exactly the same moment. What was the content of that one page? So God cannot accept that. So what to do? There is no hope for human being, this fallen uh, human being, to really restore. That's why the Messiah is coming to help us, to fill the gap for us, 
to by paying indemnity on behalf of us to f- to fill up the lack that we have so to set the condition of faith god uses time period for example moses was called on by god to fast for 40 days you remember right jesus also fasted for 40 days and the israelites were a slave for 400 years in egypt korean people they were under japanese rule for 40 years in this examples god used the numbers 40 400 this is because in the fall god lost four position foundation so you remember this so this number four four is very important why because god lost the four position foundation what is four position foundation god man woman and the child those four positions were to be the foundation upon which the ideal of creation was to be fulfilled. So ideal of creation will be fulfilled when the four position foundation can be established. So is in true parents' life and family, four position foundation established? Yes. God, true father, true mother and their first son Eugene that is in the spirit world so uh, as we study God's work through history you will see that there are one numbers that God used to set the conditions of the faith other numbers also right so let's suppose someone fulfills this condition of faith what more is needed in order to establish a foundation upon which God can send the Messiah? We already talked about it. To complete the foundation for the Messiah, we must reverse our fallen nature. This is called foundation of substance. Another name for the foundation of substance means to reverse our fallen nature. To reverse our bad behavior. If we are uh, doing something wrong, to restore that, we have to reverse, do opposite. For example, if, if oily food is not good for you, for your health, salt is not good for your health, and you are already sick, what you are going to do? To avoid early uh, to become sick, you have to do opposite. Means that you have to eat non-oily food. It's indemnity, right? You loved it. You loved the salty things, but now you have to reverse it. You have to change that. Okay. So, so also this is something that we cannot do it alone. It has to happen in a relationship. How does this work practically? Let's look at, take a look at how God, after the fall, actually tried to prepare a foundation for the Messiah in Adam's family. Okay, so today we are going to discuss more about this. So God wanted to send the Messiah as quickly as possible. God is our parent. Who loves us who is who worry about us he worry more than your parents for you loves you more than your parents like for example if your parents you think they love you so much God loves you more thousand times millions of times more God loves us and human beings so he is suffering deeply because he lost his children. Do you think your suffering is too much in your life? You feel that we are in a difficulty? If we feel like that, we are in the wrong position and attitude. Why? Because the suffering of God is so much bigger and bigger than our our suffering is very small looks like nothing nothing 
So when we have difficulty, we have to remember God is suffering. His suffering is so unbearable. If God wants to give his suffering to us, it's unbearable for us. We cannot bear it. We will definitely, we will become tear down. Our bones will be melted. One of the members actually was praying for that. To have that kind of experience, God's suffering and he couldn't stop for three days his body was shaking and painful could not stop tears just a small taste of the suffering of god he gave to that member he, he was going to die collapse so naturally he desperately wanted to send the messiah and fix the mistake of adam and eve from the beginning before sin would have a chance to multiply and corrupt the entire world. So the sin was only in the Adam's family. So God wanted to bring the Messiah exactly in the same family. That sin cannot become multiplied and become more complicated, become accumulated, that it will become more difficult. Therefore God intended... That Adam and Eve's children, Cain and Abel, reversed the fall and established a foundation upon which God could send the Messiah. So let's uh, read the slides of our divine principle for today. So for the providence of restoration to be accomplished in Adam's family, the members of his family had to make certain conditions of indemnity to restore the foundation of faith and the foundation of substance. On these two foundations, the foundation for the Messiah was to have been established and the Messiah could have come to Adam's family. Messiah, the blessing, cannot come to our life unless we pay for that. We make a condition for that, not to be accused. If you are looking, you are asking for the blessing from God. Heavenly parents, please help me with this. Please help me with that. That will not work. Unless we offer chunks and condition. You need to offer chunks and condition continuously. That based on that, God can give you the blessing. Sometimes, if you offer chunks and condition, God will see where has to spend that uh, chunks and condition. For example, one of my, one of the members, he was offering a lot of chunks and condition every night, praying, crying. And then you know what happened? He, his uh, brother, had a small baby, newborn baby, and the baby becomes sick. They went to the hospital, and the hospital, they didn't have money to pay. So they were just completely disappointed what to do. Uh, our child, you know, the parent's heart is really aching for their children. And then you know what happened? Suddenly, from nowhere, a person came to them and said that, what happened to you? Why you are so sad? Why you are, looks like your face is really... Uh, suffering. Then they explained that we came, our children, ch our baby is sick and we don't have money to pay for the hospital. They asked for the deposit. So that person sent by God said that, don't worry, I will pay for the expenses of your medication, everything. So isn't it a miracle? Yes, it's a miracle. But that's a miracle. Who paid for that? The, his brother, which was a member, by offering chunks on condition, devotion, paid for that blessing for his family. Therefore, we need to, this is a lesson. You know, I'm always, when I'm teaching divine principle, I want to teach you about the application in our life, in our daily life. What is the application of this um, foundation of faith and foundation of substance? That you receive blessings of God. is not only for your marriage and the blessing, but for any, any 
other blessing that you want to receive, two things you need. Foundation of faith, offer Changsung condition. Second, your unity with your able and leader. Very crucial and important. If you cannot have unity with your leader, you will lose the foundation to receive the Messiah. Even though you receive the blessing, it's everyday story of our life. Okay, so who did God choose from Adam's family to be central person? So I'm sure everybody knows that, right? To get things started by fulfilling a condition of faith. Who? Who God chose? It was Abel. Adam and Eve's second son. So in this slide, it talks about it. To restore through indemnity the foundation of faith, fallen people must set up an object for the condition. Substituting for God's word. For Adam's family, this object was a sacrificial offering. So we need to offer something. So their, their condition was a sacrificial offering. Now, what is that? We are offering chunks on condition. We sacrifice ourselves, our time, for the sake of the, making a foundation of faith. To restore the foundation of faith, there must also be a central figure. Yet, nowhere in the biblical record do we find Adam offering a sacrifice. So it means that God, after Adam and Eve fell, did not use Adam anymore as a central figure. He lost his position as a central person. Instead, his sons Cain and Abel offered the condition to God. So, why Abel? This might be a question, right? You might ask, why between Abel, why God did not choose Adam anymore? Why Abel? God would have wanted to use Adam. He wanted actually to use Adam. But Adam is very, the one who committed the original sin. And when God approached Adam, instead of repenting, and taking responsibility, he blamed it on Eve. Said that Eve tempted me. So start to, instead of taking responsibility, blame other people. Blame the archangel. Blame Eve. That is not the role of a central, true central person. So that's why God could not uh, choose Adam anymore. If you know in the Bible... It says, after Adam and Eve, they fall. It, what happened? God was asking them, where are you? Adam and Eve, where are you? When God is saying, where are you? It doesn't mean that he doesn't know your physical place. God is everywhere, right? When he says, where are you? Means that, okay, what's your situation? What is your decision? What do you have to do? Do you want to repent? Unfortunately, Adam and Eve did not repent. They blame each other. They didn't take responsibility for their mistakes. This is a lesson for us. If we make a mistake, go and repent. Especially before the blessing. We need to confess and repent everything. Any single mistake that comes to your mind disturbing you, you need to confess it to your central person before receiving the blessing. That is a condition for you to receive blessing. I repeat again, to receive blessing, we need to have a condition. What is that condition of confessing everything to central person, which representing God? So, in the Divine Principle, three hours, it says that what was the reason for this? God symbolically divided Adam, who embodied both good and evil. By giving him two sons, Abel representing good, 
and Cain representing evil. God set them in the position where each dealt with only one master, God or Satan, and had them offer sacrifices separately. Abel made the offering in a manner acceptable to God, so sincerely. And he chose the best of his cattle. In this way, he successfully laid the foundation of faith. Had Cain fulfilled the indemnity condition to remove the fallen nature, God would have gladly accepted his sacrifice also. The foundation of substance would then have been laid in Adam's family. To remove the fallen nature, a person must make an indemnity condition by taking a course which reverses the process through which human beings initially acquire the fallen nature. What is the meaning of reverse? Anyway, it's not explained here in these three hours, but just a little bit I explain. You know, who in the original world, who was higher in the position? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, they were higher than the angels in the creation. Why? Because Adam and Eve, they are direct children of God. We are direct children of God. The angels are in the position of servant, assisting us. So this, when the fall happened, who dominated who? And instead of Adam and Eve dominate the archangel, archangel dominated Adam and Eve. So this should be reversed. This position has to become reversed. It means that Adam and Eve should come up again. Archangel should follow Adam and Eve. This is the call reverse. So God chose two children, two sons, Abel and Cain. Abel in the position of representing God, Cain in the representing of Satan, Archangel. So Cain in the position representing the archangel, even though he is elder, has to make an indemnity condition to overcome his anger, resentment, and follow Abel, which representing Adam. If this happens in the, in the family, what happens? The indemnity condition for the foundation of substance will be established. So in review, history has a goal. After Adam and Eve fell, they, the key step that is needed in order to restore God's ideal of creation is for God to send the Messiah as the new Adam. So this is the goal of the history. We will just study about this. Huh? This in the second part. As a new Adam. Why? Because Adam, the original Adam that God created them, fell, lost their position, lost their originality. God is looking for a pure a Messiah, a true son, can fulfill his portion of responsibility. If that person overcomes the temptations of this fallen world, and is able to stand as God's true son, together with his bride, in the position of Eve, he will be able to establish a family in which God's ideal is realized. Through that family, all people will be able to return to God and participate in God's ideal of creation. So this is very important. All this sin started from where? From one family, Adam and Eve. This sinful world is a multiplication of the Adam and Eve. So how an ideal world will start? It will again the same system. It will start from a new Adam and new Eve. 
will multiply and will full, fill up the world with good lineage, godly lineage. So through that family, all people will able to return to God. So we need the Messiah. It's not that it's not an option that I, if I want it, I will choose it or not. It's not an option. If we want to restore ourselves, that's a need. It's a must. It's not an option. Everybody, without exception, has to go to the blessing of true parents because jesus said if you if you need to enter to the kingdom of heaven you need to be reborn again god requires that we fallen humanity fulfill our portion of responsibility what is our portion of responsibility anybody knows is to reverse what took place in the fall reverse it we gave that name we called it what indemnity that's why we study about indem restoration through indemnity so god will choose a central person to rep represent humanity who can take on the task of making the condition of indemnity to reverse the fall in Adam's family, that person was Abel. We learned that this indemnity condition to reverse the fall includes two steps. Listen very carefully. Number one, the central person must make a condition of faith. They must demonstrate their faith in God by making an acceptable offering. Abel this, did this by offering the best of his flock. The best of his flock. For example, you have two cows. And those cows are really giving all the, your life. It's all your life. One is very fat, healthy. Another cow is what? Thin not giving so much milk, right? And it's all only expenses. It's just eating and not helping you so much. And then you are in the position and situation that you are going to offer, you are asked to offer something. One of your cow to, for example, the church or uh, to God. Which one are you going to give? Difficult to choose, right? Because you are being tempted. Oh, this, this fat cow is all I, I have, all the expenses, all everything of my life is this fat cow. So if, if we give it up, I have nothing. That is exactly will determine that how much faith do we have to heavenly parents to god your faith will be shown when you give the best your faith will be shown when you give your biggest note of the money for the donation so this is number one foundation of faith you have to give the best. When you're offering chunks and condition, you have to put all your heart into your chunks and condition. Your mind should not go anywhere. It should not travel around. So number two, the central person representing God's position must interact with someone who represents the archangel in such a way that they reverse what took place in the fall. This means that the person in the position of the archangel must not kill the central person. Instead, they must be led to overcome their fallen nature and to unite and support 
God's central person. In Adam's family, Abel, the younger son, representing God's position. Cain, his older brother, representing the archangel. We discussed about it. So Abel, his offering was accepted. The offering of Cain was not accepted. God did it intentionally. Do you think God hated Cain? No. Just Cain was in the position to restore, reverse the fall. God did not hate Cain. Just the main thing is that Cain, for him, that his offering can be accepted, has to go to the central person, to the able, and give it through the able, and through the able offer that to God. Unity. So what, what happened? Ab Cain, instead of humble down himself, he could not control his anger, his resentment. He was thinking and he was so resentful about that God did not accept it. He was so angry and he said that why, why God did not accept my offering my, that the, I have prepared. Day by day, he let that anger to take over his body. You remember that? I told you that if we make a bad condition, it's like a boat. We make a hole in the boat and the water little by little will come, fill up the boat and we drown. The same thing. If you are angry with something, if you cannot manage your anger towards your able, towards your uh, parents, to your, towards your leader. If you cannot manage your anger, that anger little by little, little by little will control your body that you cannot get out of it anymore. That's exactly happened to the Cain. Cain at the beginning was, okay, angry, but still managing. He said, oh, that's my brother, you know, that kind of things. But little by little, let the anger control him. He could not manage the anger because he had a wrong attitude, bad attitude. And then what happened? The anger totally controlled his body that he could not see anything anymore. He could not see what is right and what is wrong and he made the wrong decision and he took the stone and hit the head of the Abel killed his very own brother do you think this just happened in our uh, uh, in Adam and Eve's uh, family no this is the story of us as a member Do you have resentment and anger towards your leader? We are in the Cain position, right? If you have that kind of resentment, you are, we are in the Cain position. If you let the anger grow and grow and grow, what is that? You will, one day you cannot control the anger and then you shout, you say something bad to your leader insult and then what happened your relationship will be destroyed you might leave the church because of resentment many people happen this the same situation they left the church they left through parents they left through mother why because of the story of Cain and Abel, the resentment, could not control and manage their anger. And then it let, little by little, drown, right? Make a hole in the boat, and then the water came, came, came. Water symbolizes of the Satan. Satan came, came into the boat, into the boat, into their body, into the body, into the body, and then become the dance floor of the Satan. Control totally the body. 
how close you are we are to God or how close we are to Satan which one have you ever thought about it have you ever thought about it are you close to God or are you close to Satan are we close to Satan more or are we close to God it depends on the level of your faith the level of your unity with your central person, with your leader. Level of your unity with your center leader. Level of your unity with the BFT leader. Level of your unity with the national leader. The more you have unity with the leader. Try to help the leader. You see, when we talk about Abel, it doesn't mean that Abel was perfect. No, right? Abel was not perfect. But we as the Cain need a condition to get close to God. And that is through the Abel, through working with our leader, central person. So this is very important, my brothers and sisters. Looks like simple, but very important. That will determine you, me, become close to true parents or become far through true parents. Depends on the level of our unity with our central person. So tragically, Cain could not overcome his fallen nature of anger and be, he murdered Abel. Instead of reversing the fall, the fall was repeated. So let's go to the next slide. The archangel fell because he did not love Adam. Adam was central person. Who was the central figure of the archangel? The central figure of archangel was not God. The central figure of archangel was Adam because we have hierarchy right there is God Adam archangel for archangel to go to the God has to go through Adam but archangel was so arrogant he said that what I am so much older than Adam I am I am more experienced than Adam and I have to go through this young man and unite with this young person? This is, this is might happen also in our movement, right? In the center, right? You are very old member. Suddenly, your center leader become a young person <laughs> coming just two months or three months to the movement. And then become central uh, center leader, and you are 20 years in the church. How is your feeling? <laughs> difficult, right? Difficult to follow you, you. You, it's difficult to unite with that kind of central figure, right? So, but we need to unite with the central figure. Cain need able to reach to God. To his offering can be accepted. So, rather he envied Adam. Archangel envied Adam. He felt jealousy to Adam. He said that what? I have been assistant of God. I have been working very hard with God. And I was very close to God. I have been helping him in creation. And then I am going to follow Adam. This is our story, my brothers and sisters. This is our story. Not Adam and Eve's story, right? This is our story. It's repeating. So Adam, who was receiving more love from God than he. This was the first primary characteristics of the fallen nature. Failing to take God's standpoint. He failed to look at the situation from God's viewpoint, 
from God's principle view. Because God's principle is like this. Everything in the universe is created like this. You look at, now you're sitting in your house. Where are you? You are on the earth. Earth is going around what? Sun. Who is the central figure of the earth? Sun is the central figure of the earth. So sun is going, uh, the earth is going around the sun. If the, if the earth says that, no, 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 I don't want to go around the sun. Sun has to go around me. What will happen? We already collapse. All of us will be dead. Because the discipline and order of the universe will be destroyed. So the universe has an order. It doesn't mean that Adam was better or the archangel was better. No, God loved both of them. But just the matter of the order. There is order in the principle of God. So this was the first. Okay, failing to take God's standpoint. Could not see the situation from God's viewpoint. He could not see the situation from God's principles of the creation viewpoints. So principles of the creation of viewpoints says that what? Even though you are 20 years in the church, if your central figure is just a young person, has been selected as a young person, a principle says that you need to humble down yourself and follow for us to be saved. So the archangel fell because he did not respect Adam as God's mediator and receive God's love through him. Rather, he attempted to seize Adam's position. This was the second primary characteristic of the fallen nature, leaving one's proper position. Archangel left his proper position. He said that, no, I don't want to be under Adam. I want to be higher than Adam. That's why he started to destroy Adam and Eve. That's why he tempted them for that reason. To destroy them. To destroy the image of Adam and Eve in front of God. To tell that, you see, look at this. Look at this. These are central figures that you appointed for me. Look at this, how miserable they are. They committed sin. They could not overcome temptation. So how well, he was accusing God and Adam and Eve. So left his proper position. That's why the world is in a chaotic situation. What is the next? Uh, so this is, okay. Number three, the archangel claimed dominion over Eve and Adam, who were his rightful lords. This was the third primary characteristics of the fallen nature, reversing dominion. Reverse his position. Adam and Eve, they were higher in the position than the archangel. Archangel says that, no, I don't want to follow this order that God created. I want to be higher than Adam and Eve. Reverse the dominion. The archangel conveyed to Adam and Eve his evil will. This was the first primary characteristic of the fallen nature. Multiplying the evil. So let's look at ourselves. Which one of these things do we have? Do you multiply the evil? There are people that they multiply the evil, right? For example, they mm, send the links and uh, to the emails of the people about the uh, pornography, those kind of things. They are multiplying the evil that comes from Satan. Reversing dominion. Are you in the saying that no, 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 I don't want to be under this young leader. I want to be higher than that. Leaving own proper position. Failing to take God's span standpoint. Okay. So this is why the Messiah could not come to Adam's family. 
God really was eager to the Messiah to come in Adam's family in that time. But because this problem happened, Cain killed Abel, Messiah could not come to Adam's family. It took God a long, long time before he was able to try again to find another person. Who was another person? Noah. Right? So what are some lessons we can learn from this session? This part, first, God is not working randomly. He's not just working accidentally. He's working based on his principles. History has a goal, as well as principles by which God is working to save his children. So to restore us back to ideal situation. So, to, let's go to our slides. To remove these characteristics of the fallen nature. First, Cain, who stood in the archangel's position, should have taken God's standpoint by loving Abel, who stood in Adam's position. Should have loved Abel. Humble down himself. If your central figure is a very young person, support him, not to destroy him. Support your central person. Your husband and your wife your, are your central figure. If you don't love your husband or wife, what will happen? It's the same mistake of the Cain means you're, mis you're this, uh, making mistake of the cane. You cannot love your spouse as your central figure, as your savior. Who is your savior? Your spouse is your savior. That will save you from your fallen natures, to remove your fallen natures. Second, Cain should have received God's love through Abel, respecting him, as, re, respecting him as God's mediator. Respect. Respect your wife, your spouse, as God's mediator for you to be saved, to, be, to grow. Respect your center leader. Respect your uh, uh, national leader. As God's mediator. These are lessons. Not in the Cain and Abel's family. But it's for us. These are lessons. Third. Cain should have obediently submitted to Abel. Accepting Abel's dominion. Accept the dominion, right? To reverse the uh, dominion. Submit. I'm following you. Even though you have sometimes uh, difficulty in uh, fulfilling the order and instruction of your central person. But don't just be resentful and angry. Just sincerely, heartily go and talk. You know, you gave this instruction. I have difficulty, you know, to fulfill that. I feel like this. And then your central figure will give you encouragement. Don't worry, you can do it. Anyway, you can heart to heart, you can discuss about your problem, but not to have resentment against your central person. Don't have resentment. Last, Cain should have learned God's will from Abel, multiplying goodness. So Cain cannot directly give his offering to God. He has to go through Abel. Okay. However, Cain killed Abel. In murdering Abel, Cain repeated the sin of the archangel. What was the sin of the archangel? Archangel killed Adam and Eve spiritually. But Cain killed Abel physically. That is, he reenacted the very process which had given rise to the primary characteristics of the fallen nature. Adam's family 
thus failed to lay the foundation of substance. Cain and Abel could not unite together as two brothers. When Abel made his sacrifice in a manner acceptable to God, he fulfilled the indemnity condition to restore the foundation of faith and firmly secured his position as the central figure of the substantial offering. Secured that position. He was successful. However, when Cain murdered Abel, they failed to make the substantial offering. Hence, neither the foundation of substance nor the foundation for the Messiah could be established. So if you remember, uh, foundation of substance is in our relationship with another person. How is my relationship with my spouse? You offer a lot of chunks on condition. Okay? Day and night you pray. That's foundation of faith. Is foundation of faith will save you alone? No. You need to have a good relationship with your spouse. That's the foundation of substance. That's why you need to work. You need to work it out. It's difficult. It's so difficult. You meet a person completely different from you. Different sometimes interests. A raise of your anger. And your fallen nature, right? And then that's the time that your spouse become your enemy. Then you have to remember that true parents and Jesus said that love your enemy. Many people, they cannot overcome it. They divorce. Because they cannot love their enemy. They are not true Christians. They are not true unificationists. Cannot love their enemy. So the true Christian is the one, true unificationist is the one who love his or her spouse wholeheartedly. True unificationist is the one who love his leader even though not qualified not perfect leader. That is a true unificationist. Humble down himself and accept that his offering, he can go to God through his able. That's why reporting is very important, brothers and sisters. Confessing about everything of your past to your central person to your BFD leader is important. When you confess your mistakes in the past to your central person, it means you unite with your central person. That is a foundation of substance. That's why before you receive the blessing, what you are going to do, you are writing your confession. You go and have your confession to your leader. Your mistakes. That is foundation of substance. If you don't do it, if you hide something from your leader, you did some mistake, you didn't confess it, means that your foundation of substance is not complete. You should go back to him, to your leader, and confess everything. You know, can I talk to you? You know, I before my blessing, I received the blessing. But you know, there is something in my mind I disturbing me. I didn't confess to you. I want to confess it to you because I want to start my family life totally. Get rid of everything from the past. So you need to do that. Otherwise, it will disturb you. Continuously will disturb you. That event that you did not confess. Okay, so however, let's go to our back to our slides. However, when Cain murdered Abel, they failed to make the substantial offering. Hence, neither the foundation of substance nor the foundation for the Messiah could be established. God's providence of restoration in Adam's family came to not zero. 
Okay. So after Cain murdered Abel, it was many generations before God was able to find someone else through whom he could work. So God has predestined absolutely the fulfillment of the purpose of creation. And his will remains unchangeable. Even though Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, they failed. His will is absolute unchanging. No matter what, I will fulfill it. This family could not do it. I will choose another person to fulfill it. God, upon the foundation of the loyal heart, which Abel demonstrated toward heaven, because Abel was successful in the foundation of faith, right? Chose Seth, Seth in his place. Because Abel already died, right? So he chose the third son, Seth. Seth. From amongst Seth's descendants, God chose Noah's family and commenced a new chapter in his providence. Noah's family was responsible to fulfill the indemnity condition to restore the foundation of faith and then the indemnity condition to restore the foundation of substance. They were to restore through indemnity the foundation for the Messiah, which Adam's family had failed to lay. So finally God found Noah. The story of Noah, the ark and the flood is well known, right? Everybody knows about that. It is often considered to be nothing more than a myth or a story for children, unfortunately. Right? For the outside world, it's become like a story. It's just uh, some story, historical story. We, we are not sure it happened or not. You know, this is a, the mindset of the uh, today's uh, scientific people, right? They cannot accept it. However, the story of Noah reveals God's urgent desire to send the Messiah. With Noah's family, God made his second attempt to prepare a foundation upon which he could send the Messiah by establishing the necessary indemnity condition. So you see, principle cannot be violated, no matter what. Yes, the people are suffering. The people were killing each other. They were eating each other, right, during that time. But the principle says that human being has a portion of responsibility and cannot to change it. Absolutely. Why? Because God created that. And if we do not fulfill our portion of responsibility, Satan will not accept us as his central figure. He said that, hey, 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 you, you couldn't do your responsibility. So how can I follow you? So Noah, okay, so. Noah was the central figure to restore the foundation of faith. Let's go back to our slide. The object for the condition by which Noah was to restore the foundation of faith was the ark. It was the indemnity condition for the restoration of the cosmos, which had been lost to Satan due to Adam's fall and signified the new cosmos. After the ark was completed, God judged the world with the flood for 40 days. Its purpose was to eliminate sinful history sinful humanity in order to raise up a family who would relate only with him in reality god helped humanity he removed all other sinful people sinful uh, tribes that have been developed that only there would be one family dealing with one family and they were not being interfered by other evil people so, okay, so the first condition, which is the condition to restore Adam and Eve's lack of faith, was fulfilled by Noah. When he built the ark, he persevered through years of ridicule, and even his family 
thought that he was crazy. Everybody, everybody mock him. What are you doing, you crazy guy? You know, you are making an ark at the top of the mountain. And you say that there would be, you, you, you receive a revelation. God told you that there would be a uh, uh, flood one day. And then, uh, so if it's flood, why you are going at the top of the mountain? The flood is down here. So many people, they were mocking him. Even his family, his wife got tired of him. Everybody was going to, to his wife and telling that, why your Noah is doing like this? He become crazy. You need to take care of your husband. You know, everybody were insulting. And the wife was really tired of this kind of situation. And he was, they were thinking that Noah become crazy. They were looking at their, their husband as a crazy man. The parents looking at the children looking at the father, that the father become crazy. But Noah never gave up. And because he built the ark, his family, including his three sons and their wives, were saved. The prophecy of God came true. When the ark was built, completed, they went to the ark, bring the animals into the ark. From every animal, they put a pair right inside. So what happened? The rain started. So the people thought that it's the rain. Okay, will we stop? Rain become more flood, more flood, more flood, more flood, more flood. Become higher, went higher, went higher, went higher and cross cover all the mountains of the earth. So the family of Noah were successful. They were saved in fulfilling their mission. So Noah's sons, so through the 40-day judgment, Noah's family offered the ark in the manner acceptable to God and restored through indemnity the foundation of faith. Noah's son, Shem and Ham, were to have a stood. Okay, so this is after the, the flood. Settled down after 40 days and little by little, the, the water become dry and then they came back again to the uh, land. So they start a new beginning and a new life. There was only one family on the earth and that was the family of Noah. So were to have a stood in the position of Cain and Abel, so now the foundation of substance should be established. So Noah's sons, Shem and Ham, were to have a stood in the position of Cain and Abel, respectively. But uh, the central figure in the family was Noah, right? So the central figure is the one has is in the Abel position. So, but if Shem and Ham are in the Abel and Cain positions, how how to solve this issue? Had they then succeeded in substantiating offering by fulfilling the indemnity condition to remove the fallen nature, they would have laid the foundation of substance. How? For Noah's family to make an acceptable substantial offering, Ham, Noah's second son, and the central figure of the substantial offering was to restore in the position of Abel. So, Ham, as an able, selected as the able in the family of Noah, should have offered some condition, right? So you remember that every central figure has to offer first foundation of faith, then foundation of substance. But who made the foundation of faith in the family of Noah? Noah made the foundation of faith in the family of Noah. So what to do? Ham was selected as the able to inherit the foundation of faith from his father, Ham should have been united with his father under any circumstances. So after the flood has passed and Noah's family has settled once again on the land, God wanted to send the Messiah to Noah's family. But first, Noah's sons had to fulfill the indemnity condition to rever reverse the fallen nature and in so doing complete the foundation for the Messiah. In the case of Noah's family, it was Noah, not Ham, who made the symbolic offering. 
Therefore, for him to stand in the position of Abel as one who has succeeded in making the symbolic offering, he had to become inseparably one in heart with his father Noah. That's why God tested Ham. Is Ham united with his father or not? How he tested? Let us examine how God worked to help Ham become one in heart with Noah. There should be a condition, right? Genesis 9 verse 22 25 reports that when Ham saw his father lying naked in his tent, he felt ashamed of Noah and stirred up the same feelings in his brothers, Shem and Japheth. When Ham felt ashamed of his father's nakedness, an act that resembled Adam and Eve's covering their lower parts and hiding, he made a condition for Satan to enter. Hence, his feeling and act constitute a sin. He distrusted his father. Consequently, Ham could not restore through indemnity the position of Abel, lost that position from which to make the substantial offering. Since Ham thus failed to establish the foundation of substance, the providence of restoration in Noah's family ended in failure. So Ham, who was the second son, was to unite in heart with his father. That was a test for him. Is he united with his heart, with his father? Is he ashamed of his father? Is he distrusting his father? Then together they would help his older brother Shem overcome his fallen nature. So. Sadly. Ham could not believe that his father was in God's position. On one occasion, Noah became drunk and fell asleep. Right? So that is the, the time. He became drunk and fell asleep, naked in his tent. Ham walked into the rent tent and felt ashamed instead of respecting his father. He then convinced his brothers that Noah had done something sinful. They then took a blanket and walking backwards, covered his father. When Noah awoke, he cursed the descendants of Ham. Noah's family came to reflect the fallen nature instead of God's nature. This is why God was unable to send the Messiah to Noah's family. So this is the story. God has wanted actually to make a new beginning through Noah's family. He removed the surrounding civilization through the flood so that God, that Noah's family could prepare the foundation for the Messiah without any interference of the any evil people in the world. If God could have sent the Messiah to Noah's family, Noah's family could have been restored. And the scene of Adam and Eve could have been removed. From that point, God's ideal, a world of goodness, could have been emerged. So, Ham, why it was sinful? Because he distrusted his father. He forgot that who saved them. He saw with his own eyes that the flood came. He saw with his own eyes that the, all the people, they died. The only family they were saved is this family. And this family were saved because of whom? Because of his father. He forgot to be grateful for that. What do you learn? Gratefulness. Are we grateful for the blessing that you are receiving? Or you forget. Just sometimes we 
We are inspired at the time of the blessing when we are receiving the blessing of true parents and then later we, little by little, we become ungrateful heart. Little by little forget that how big is their blessing. Should not be like that. We should not be like Noah's family, Ham. Let's go back to our slides. God had absolutely predestined that the purpose of creation would one day be realized. Therefore, God called Abraham in place of Noah. Abraham's family was to restore the foundation for the Messiah and receive the Messiah upon that foundation. Thus, Abraham had to restore through indemnity the foundation of faith and his sons had to restore through indemnity the foundation of substance. Abraham was to inherit the mission of Noah and thus the mission of Adam. In this capacity, he represented restore Adam. So, as we see here, after Noah, God waited for another central figure and he chose Abraham to leave his home. He told him, leave your home, guiding him to the land of Canaan. There God made a covenant with Abraham. God intended to bless Abraham's family and from his family, raise up a great people who would be able to receive the Messiah. Once again, a family this time, Abraham's, was to prepare a foundation for the Messiah. So God's will is absolute, not changing. Even Noah's family failed, he will choose another person until that this can be completed. God commanded Abraham to offer a dove, a ram, and a heifer as a condition of showing his foundation of faith. These three sacrifices symbolize the cosmos, which is completed through the three stages of the growing period. The dove represented the formation stage, the ram, the growth stage, and the heifer, the completion stage. Okay, so why did Abraham place the three sacrifices on one altar? It is because Abraham, now in the position of Adam, was supposed to restore all at once the long providence which God had conducted through three providential generations of Adam, Noah, and Abraham. That's why three altars. The three of them, Abraham was able to restore everything all at once. So he put it in one altar, three offerings, he put in one altar. It's symbolic. Abraham did not cut the dove in two, as he should have. And birds of prey came down and defiled the sacrifice. Abraham did not take it serious. He said that, oh, anyway, it's okay. I cut these big ones. This is a small, no need maybe to cut it. So that's the sin, because he absolutely did not follow God. Not, not dividing it meant that he offered what had not been wrested from Satan's possessions. His mistake had the effect of acknowledging Satan's claim of the possessions over the sacrifice. So God asked Abraham to make an offering, right? So this is the story. That consists of dividing a cow, a ram, and a she-goat, and two birds in half. He divided the cow, and the ram, and the goat. But she did not divide the two birds. At that point, Abraham fell asleep, and upon awakening, found birds of the prey eating the offering. This was a sign that, that Abraham's offering was not acceptable. Abraham had failed to fulfill the foundation of faith for the coming Messiah. So, let's go back to our slides. Through this failure in the symbolic offering, all the conditions God intended to restore through it were lost. 
As a consequence, Abraham's descendants had to suffer oppression and slavery for 400 years in the land of Egypt. And the providence centered on him was prolonged through the three generations of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So this is very important. If the central figure could not fulfill their portion of responsibility, who will suffer? Their children will suffer. This is what true parents is continuously talking to us. If we cannot fulfill our portion of responsibility, who will suffer? Our next generations will suffer. After Abraham failed in the symbolic offering, God gave him another chance to work with him and command him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, as a burnt offering. So how is it possible God gave another chance to, to Abraham, right? He never gave a chance to Abel. He never gave another chance to Noah, right? They had only one chance to uh, offer foundation of faith. But why God gave a chance to Abraham again to offer, make a foundation of faith? But this time a bigger indemnity. Last time was his... The birds, you know, the animals. But this time he said that you need to offer your son. What God, God could do, right? This is uh, the very complicated situation. Although God does not usually give us a second chance on the foundation of Abel's offering. And the offering of Noah. God called on Abraham to make a greater condition of faith. Why God gave a chance to Abraham? Because Abel was successful in his foundation of faith. Noah was successful in the foundation of faith. Because of that two previous central figures, they were successful in completing their foundation of faith. God was able to give a chance to Abraham. So you need to remember that. God is always will get victory and fulfill his will in the third time, the third attempt. So Abraham's time was the third attempt. Abraham's family should have got victory. Let's go back to the slides. Why did God work with Abraham again? First, the number three represents completion. Since the providence to lay the foundation for the Messiah in Abraham's family was the third dispensation. Number three means representing completion. The providence of God should have been completed in Abraham's family. So this time should have got victory. God's principle required that it conclude this time. This is a principle. Satan cannot accuse it. Because this is a principle. And the third attempt should be fulfilled. Number two. Second, Satan had attacked both Adam and his son, Cain, defiling the family over the course of two generations. Hence, according to the principle of restoration through indemnity, God could work to take back Abraham and his son Isaac over the course of two generations. Because Satan attacked Two generations of Adam and uh, Cain and Kill, Abel. Based on that foundation, God could take back. Because Satan attacked. Then God has this chance. You attacked these two generations. Based on that, I have the right to give chance to these two generations again. Number three. Third, even though Abraham failed, God could raise him up and give him another chance to make an offering based on the accumulated merit of Abel's and Noah's faithful heart. The condition. So that's, that's a very good lesson. Our condition, our chunks on condition will not be wasted. You are offering chunks and condition. Don't think that it will be wasted. You are offering chunks and condition. You didn't get any answer. You didn't get your answer of your prayer. You said that, oh, it's waste. What am I doing? Nothing. God didn't answer me. It's not right. None of our chunks and condition will be wasted. They will be accumulated. 
This is also the same because of the Changsheng condition of Abel and Noah accumulated. Based on that, the blessing went to whom? To Abraham. Sometimes the blessing God is not giving to us. You are offering chunks on condition, chunks on condition. Nothing is happening to your life. Because God is accumulating it for your children. So don't, don't judge God. Never, never. God always is doing what is good for us. Okay. Abraham put forth his hand and took the knife to slay Isaac. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. So you know the story, right? He told him to offer his son, Isaac. What son? The son that he has been waiting. You know, the Abraham could not have children for many years. God just promised him that I will give you a son. And he couldn't have a son for many years. And Isaac was given to him when he was over 100 years almost. So he loved Isaac so much because he so much he suffered for Isaac for having a son. I don't know if you have experience or something. For something that you suffer a lot, then when you get it, you it's more sweet for you. Right? If you suffer for something, if, for example, you suffer, you suffer, for example, to go to Korea, you're longing hard, you never, you couldn't go, you couldn't go this time, you couldn't go this time, but you prayed, you prayed, and you prayed, and then finally God give you this chance to go to Korea, for example, to Changpyeong, to meet true mother. It's just like the sweetest thing in the universe because you suffered for that. So suffering sometimes is not bad. Because you value the blessing. Right, my brothers and sisters? So don't, we should not complain if sometimes there is suffering in our life, right? Our life is difficult, you know. Why God is not giving us money? Why God is not doing this, that? You know, why God abandoned us? No, He didn't abandon us. He never abandoned us. Because He wants us to value the blessing that he is giving to us in the future. So, it would have been easier for Abraham to take his own life, actually. Rather than his son. And so, in being willing to offer Isaac, Abraham died and was born again through Isaac's faith. It means that it was kind of Abraham died. It was like a killing himself and reborn again. Even though he, he, he wanted to offer his son, but through offering his son, it, it looks like he killed himself, right? When you, it's just like child is part of your body, is part of your soul. When offering your son, it means you offer yourself. When Abraham successfully offered Isaac, it means he killed himself and he reborn again. That's why the Bible says that if you lose your life, you will gain it. If you gain your life, you will lose it. This is the meaning. He lost his life. He was ready to give his life. And he gained his life back. So, not only is Abraham willing to offer Isaac, but Isaac... Because of his deep trust and love for his father, was a willing offering. Because Isaac asked Abraham, 
Isaac, whenever Abraham was offering some sheep or something, he was always accompanying his father. And then they went on the mountain and then Abraham told him that we are going to give some offering to God. God asked me to offer something. And then Isaac was saying that, where is our sheep, daddy? And then Abraham was quiet. And Isaac found out in his heart that he is the one to be offered. That's why Isaac himself went and lay down on the altar without any resistance. Where you can find this kind of son, right? So faithful, so trusting. He said that, offer me heaven. Father, don't worry. I love you so much. If your God asks you to offer me, Offer me that much faith Isaac had. Do, do we have that much faith? Ah, I don't. So difficult, right? Even though we are living many years after Isaac, still we are. We may not have this, this kinds of faith. Amazing faith. Amazing faith. But Isaac, because of his deep trust and love for his father, was a willing offering. This is one of the most remarkable stories of the Bible. This is unforgettable. The, the most exciting, interesting, remarkable story in the Bible. That's why Abraham is the father of faith. Father of all the Abrahamic faith. When God sees Abraham's faith, he sends an angel to stop him from killing Isaac. Then Abraham and Isaac found a ram caught in the uh, some branches, bushes, bushes. And they offered the ram to God. This became the offering that fulfilled the indemnity condition of faith in preparation for God to send the Messiah. First time in the history. Oh, so foundation of faith completed, oh, not yet foundation of substance, right? This was a second chance to offer foundation of faith. Abraham's zeal, let's go to the slides. Abraham's zeal to do God's will and his resolute actions carried out with absolute faith, obedience and loyalty, lifted him up to the position of already having killed Isaac. Therefore, he completely separated from separated Satan from Isaac. Because Abraham succeeded in his offering of Isaac, the providence of restoration in Abraham's family could be carried on by Isaac. Isaac could continue. Isaac become, uh, inherit his father's mission by his faith. In this way, Isaac having inherited Abraham's mission, made the symbolic offering and restored through indemnity the foundation of faith. Before Esau and Jacob, Isaac's two sons, could make the substantial offering, Jacob first had to fulfill the indemnity condition to restore the position of Abel. First, in the fight to restore the birthright of the eldest son on the individual level, Jacob, cleverly obtained it from Esau in exchange for some bread and a pottage of lentils. So, now Isaac has two sons. These two sons are in the position of Cain and Abel, Esau and Jacob. So, Jacob, the youngest one, cleverly, he got the birthright. You know, the birthright means what? The birthright, it was a tradition in the old age, even now, that the older son will inherit everything from the father. The older son. So that time, at that time also, Esau was the one who will inherit from Isaac, his son. But this should be reversed. This should be upside down, right? Because of the restoration. You remember, Archangel, he took the position of Adam. This should be restored. So that's why Esau, Jacob, even though was the younger, should stand as the eldest son. So when uh, 
for the condition of the reverse, the fallen nature, again, God would work through two brothers. Okay, so one elder is in the position of the archangel and the one younger in the position of represent to God's side. These were Isaac's two sons, Esau and Jacob. Esau was the firstborn and like a Cain, and he represented the fallen lineage of the archangel. Jacob was in the second born, representing God's side. In this story, we begin to see the importance of role of women in God's providence. This one. Until now, we did not see the role of women in the Bible's stories. But this one was so important. Their mother, Rebecca, recognized that Esau, the elder son, was not the good one. I mean, in the good position. She realized that the blessing has to go to, uh, the blessing of Isaac has to go to the youngest son. So she knew that. She started to help him. So the first one that uh, we read in the, here in the divine principle and it's in the Bible, uh, he got the birthright from Esau. Esau went to the desert and he was so hungry and tired coming back from the desert. At the same time, Jacob was making lentils. And then um, the, J Esau went to him and said, can you give me some lentils? So Jacob, he, he knew that he needs to get the birthright from him. He said that you give me your birthright, then I will give you a bowl of pottage and lentils. So Esau was so hungry. He couldn't think anything about this kind of things. He didn't care about birthright, that kind of thing. The only thing he was caring was a stomach at that moment. So he accepted, okay, my birthright for you. So he gave it verbally already. And he ate the pottage and lentils. So he verbally approved already, okay? So... Then next step is that Esau, Jacob has to receive the blessing from his father. So the mother knew that. The father Isaac, Isaac that was the father, the son of Abraham, told to the mother, to Rebecca, go and ask and bring my son that I can give you my blessing to him. That he can inherit everything from me. Of course, the eldest son, right? Esau. But Esau at that time was uh, out. He was not there. He was uh, with his cattle or I don't know, even in the desert he was working. So the mother was very wise and then uh, bring Jacob, said that, Jacob, come here. Your father wants to give the blessing. You are the one who has to receive the blessing. And then... Um, the, the Isaac, Isaac, the father's eyes was so, uh, could not see properly. But uh, he knew his elder son because he was touching his uh, hand. And the, hair, the hand of the uh, Esau was hairy. So mother knew. And they put a, a skin of the sheep on the hand of the Esau, uh, Jacob. And then he bring him to the tent. And... Isaac said, okay, come here, my son. I want to give my blessing. And he touched his hand and he, he saw that he's hairy. And he said, okay, okay. So he trusted and then he gave his blessing. I'm giving your, my blessing to you, my son. So reversed. He received a blessing as a young son. First time in the history. Never happened this. Always the eldest son, they received the inheritance, right? So he received the inheritance and the blessing from his father. After that, Esau came from the desert back to the home. And then he found out that the, his father was looking for him to give his blessing. He went to the tent and he said that, Father, I came here. I'm already here. Please give me your blessing. And then said that, what? What blessing? I already gave my blessing. He said, no, it was not me. It was my younger brother, Jacob. And he said that, I am so sorry. I can give only one time my blessing. Whoever received it already received it. So Esau become like an angry tiger. 
and he was looking for his younger brother to kill him because he was so angry he deceived him but actually not deceived because you know that the story of the lentils right he got the birthright he gave the birthright to his uh, younger brother he said okay my birthright so he didn't deceive actually right he got the birthright before he get the promise before but he didn't take it serious he thought that it's it's okay it's not going to happen you know so then the mother was very wise the mother said that isa a uh, jacob younger son escape go to your uncle Laban. Don't stay here. Esau is angry and he is a strong. He will definitely kill you. Escape to the desert. So, second, Jacob went to Haran, which represented the satanic world. After suffering through 21 years of drudgery, he restored the birthright by gaining family and wealth as his due inheritance. Third, Jacob triumphed in wrestling with an angel at the ford of the Jabbok, thereby restoring dominion over the angel in a substantial struggle. Dominate the angel. You see, until that time, the angels, they were higher than human beings. But Jacob reversed it. Wrestle with the angel, right? And this way, Jacob restored through in them to the position of Abel. Amazing family. This is an amazing historical family. Would not be forget, forgotten this historical family for eternity. They got victory. The first, huh? So anyway, not yet complete the victory. So Jacob lived under his uncle for 21 years. His uncle took advantage of him repeatedly. Why? Why repeatedly? Because uh, uh, Jacob went there and then uh, Jacob said that uh, I fall in love with uh, the youngest daughter. And then he said, I want to get married with your daughter. And then the uncle, he, he noticed something. He noticed that from the moment that Jacob came, his uh, many blessings is coming to his uh, sheep the number of the sheep is increasing uh, many rain is coming the, their uh, you know their crops are abundant so he found that this something is related to this guy so he said that i want to use this guy so he said that okay i will give my daughter but you have to work for me for seven years so jacob said okay after seven years, at least I will get that the daughter I love, all right? So he worked, 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 seven years, finished, and then <laughs> went to the uncle and said, okay, seven years. And that time already many, 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 their sheep, their cattle, their uh, animals, their, uh, you know, wealth increased during that seven years because God was with Jacob. So Laban was said that, hey, yeah, 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 if you get the daughter now, he will just leave and then I want more. He was very greedy. But God was using uh, the uncle, right? It's not evil. God was using the uncle because Jacob had to fulfill 21 year course. So the time of the uh, marriage at night, Laban told to the oldest daughter not the youngest daughter he said that the oldest daughter you go and sleep with jacob tonight so that time there was no lamp you know <laughs> there was just a candle or something the tent was very dark you know and then jacob sit down and then the first night they experience they didn't have three days ceremony right but uh, they had <laughs> this kind of experience and then after that in the morning, he woke up and he saw that, oh my gosh, this is not the youngest daughter. This is the oldest one. 
He ran to the uncle, angry, uncle, why you are cheating me? You deceived me. This is not the daughter that I want. And the uncle Laban says, okay, okay, okay. If you want the, the youngest one, okay, don't uh, make it. Another seven years you need to work for me. So then <laughs> anyway, Jacob start to work another seven years. After seven years finish, he got married with the youngest one. And then he said that, okay, uncle, I want to go back to my home. Uh, I already miss my family. And then, uh, you know, I work for you for 14 years. You need to give me something, you know, at least some cattle, some, uh, you know, animals, you know, donkey, that kind of things. Wealth, give to me that I can bring with me. And then the uncle Laban said that, hey, 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 I will not let you go easily. You need to work another seven years for me. And then I will give you the wealth that you need. And then, so another seven years. And then after seven years, he got his uh, wives. He had many children already. And he had many, uh, what do you call the helpers. He had made, he made a tribe actually. He, he bring a tribe already with him. So going back to uh, meet Esau, his enemy that was going to kill him. On the way that he was going, Jacob wrestled with the angel. And then finally the angel struck Jacob. And uh, Jacob actually got, uh, did not release the angel. Very stubborn. The angel wanted to go and then uh, the Jacob did not leave him. He was holding the leg, you know, that kind of things. I will not let you go, you know. And then, uh, uh, then uh, the angel, when he saw that he's so stubborn and he's really de defeated by him. And then he said that, okay, from today, your name is not Jacob. From today, your name is Israel. Israel in Hebrew means victorious. So Jacob got victory over the angel. So Isaac's sons, Esau and Jacob, had to be placed, let's go to the slide, had to be placed in the divided positions of Cain and Abel, respectively. They were responsible to fulfill the endemic condition to remove the fallen nature and lay the foundation of substance. By restoring dominion over the angel through his victorious fight with the angel, he received the name Israel, laying the ground work upon which the chosen people would be established. So who made the foundation? Of the Israelites, the chosen people, Jacob made the foundation. So, when Esau opened his arms and affectionately welcomed. So, let's go to the story back. So, he was going towards Esau. And Esau heard that his brother is coming. Jacob also sent some spy ahead to check and then they returned back and said that Esau has made an army already they have all swords and they are coming to kill not you all your tribe your children anybody that they are ready to kill you so Jacob was thinking that he was very wise God was with him so anybody who is God is with him has wisdom can make a good decision. So he said that, so I have to do something. So he separated some sheep, cows, wealth, money that he collected. And he told to some of his servants, he said that you bring ahead of us these things, these gifts, and give it to Esau. So, when Esau received those things ahead of the time, so his heart was said, oh, my brother is giving all this wealth to me? Amazing. Because um, uh, he, he was actually wanted the wealth because they were really in the difficult situation. So he was really so shocked. You know, what? Why my brother is doing like this? You know, it's kind of, you know, you're being shocked when you're, uh, somebody is doing something that you don't expect. So he was shocked. 
and his heart little bit melted, right? And for his brother. So when they reached finally to each other, uh, Jacob offered three, three bows to his brother. And he asked, my brother, I am so sorry. I am so humble in front of you. I understand you are so angry. I know, but I love you. You are my brother. You are, you are from my blood. I am from your blood. How can I, you know, don't love you? So no, this kind of things. And he melted his brother's heart. And then the J Esau's heart was melted and said that, how can I kill my brother? You know, and he gave me lots of wealth, you know, that kind of things. He gave bribe, right? Bribing. Corruption. <laughs> He was bribing him, so, and said that, okay, he already gave me lots of things. Anyway, so is my brother, let him to, you know, we will forgive him. So they went, he moved forward, and he embraced his younger brother. Unlike the Cain who killed Abel, Esau did not kill his brother. He overcome his anger. And the two brothers, they embrace each other. And this is the first victory, the first family that they fulfill. Foundation of substance happened in this time between Esau and Jacob. You don't know how much God was happy at that time. Maybe he was celebrating in heaven already. All the angels, you know, they were invited for the feast. Because God was so happy. The first family that they fulfilled. The foundation for receiving the Messiah. Can you believe that? This was the dream of God. For many years he has been working, working. That one family can fulfill. And this family were able to fulfill that dream. Okay, so this was the great moment in human history. For the first time, God was able to find a family, men and women working together, brothers working together, who were able to fulfill the human portion of responsibility. They accomplished the conditions of indemnity to reverse what had happened in the fall. Abraham and Isaac established the condition of faith and with the help of Rebecca, Isaac's son, Esau and Jacob were able to reverse the fallen nature. What is that? Means the older brother humbled himself and he said to younger brother, younger brother, I am ready to follow you. You are my leader. You are my able. I am going to, to God through you. You are my central person. You are my savior. So this is the first time that this is the remarkable victory. It is because of this accomplishment that God could send the Messiah to Jacob's descendants. So let's read that. When he saw open his arms and affectionately welcomed Jacob as he returned to Canaan, they fulfilled the indemnity condition to remove the fallen nature. Their victory restored through indemnity horizontally in one family, the long vertical course of history in which God had been working to restore the foundation of substance. So I want to somebody read Erwin, can you read? Open your that uh, little bit change. That's the foundation for the Messiah. Family foundation was established in Isaac's family. However, by Abraham's time, fallen people had already built up satanic nations, which could easily overpower, overpower Abraham's family. Hence, the Messiah could not have safely come that foundation. Hence, Jacob's family entered Egypt centering on Joseph and went through the 400 years of indemnity course trying to build the national foundation 
with the Messiah. Okay, so thank you very much, Erin. Okay, so you remember that we discussed that God wanted to bring the Messiah in Adam's family. It means that if Cain and Abel were able to unite together, one of the children of the Adam would become the Messiah to save in their family. God wanted to bring the Messiah in Noah's family. If Ham united with his father, make the foundation of substance in their family, the Messiah could be born. But this in the Jacob's family different. Why God did not send immediately the Messiah? Huh? This is a question. Why did not immediately send the Messiah? So at this point, you may ask, why didn't the Messiah come? It wasn't until 2,000 years later that Jesus was born in Israel, right? After Abraham, 2,000 years later. It took 2,000 years. So how is it possible? There are two reasons. First, at the time of Adam and Noah, God just needed to restore one family. There was no other people in the, on the world, no other uh, tribes. And then restore one family. That would have been enough. But after Noah, God had to deal with the kingdoms, empires of the fallen world. Satan was not just sitting down, right? He was making his empires. He was making his own tribe. He was making his army that to kill this uh, messiah that is going to be born so did this meant that preparing a family foundation for the messiah was no longer enough family foundation was not enough if the messiah could come in that family right there was many empires many kingdoms all around just in one day, they bring our army and then uh, they, all the family of Jacob, including the Messiah, they will uh, hang them into the, uh, with the, execute them. They, they cut their head. So family could not protect the Messiah. If the evil world has kingdoms and empires with vast armies, a family will be unable to protect the coming Messiah. For this reason, God must prepare a nation before he can send the Messiah. If a nation is a different story, right? Nation has an army. Nation has a people. And then if the Messiah comes, and if that nation accepts the Messiah, so the army can protect, you know, the people will stand around him. They will not allow just easily to kill the Messiah. Unless that the nation themselves killed the Messiah, right? So that's a different story that happened in the Jesus time. Therefore, after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's victory, God began to plan for preparation for a nation to receive the Messiah. So to form a nation. They were just a family. They need to become a tribe, clan. Their tribe can become a nation. And when the nation... Uh, complete complete the foundation of faith and substance, then the Messiah come. This would be the mission of who? Anybody knows? Who was going to make the nation? You can text or you can open your uh, microphone. Who, whose mission, whose central figure was mission to make the nation? After uh, J I I Isaac and Jacob. Anybody knows? Moses. Moses. Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Mary Grace is here. So, so this would the mission of the Moses. The second reason the Messiah did not come for 2,000 years, more years, is that the preparation of a nation 
did not go well. That nation start to be unfaithful. They start to not follow God properly. The Israelites as a people had a hard time to overcome their fallen nature. It was difficult for them to support and follow the central persons God called to represent him. Very difficult to follow their central figure. Are we like that, my brothers and sisters? Is it difficult for us to follow our central figure? If it's difficult to follow our central figure, it means we are Israelites. <laughs> we are descendants of the Israelites. We inherited from the Israelites. We are the, from the blood of the Israelites. So they turned against Moses. Actually, later we will study this story. Also very interesting. You might like it, but just don't sleep. Huh? This would be for the other sections. So the commandments and the prophets that were sent to them by God. And uh, what are the lessons we learn from God's effort in Adam's family, Noah's family, and Abraham's family to prepare a place where God can send the Messiah. So... God regardless. So let's say, uh, Marjorie, can you read this? Can you open your uh, microphone? Because I can see you in my... God is Abraham, Isaac, Isaac, and Jacob as the same person with respect to his will, even though they were three different individuals. Exodus 3, verse 6. Accordingly, Jacob's success in the course of sub subjugate Satan meant Isaac's success, and Isaac's success meant Abraham's success. Therefore, the providence of restoration centering, centering on Abraham, though it was extended to Isaac and Jacob, comes to, to be regarded in the sight of God as having been accomplished in Abraham's own generation without any prolongation. Okay, so thank you very much, Marjorie. Yes, by receiving the name Israel, Jacob laid the groundwork upon which the chosen people would be established. And by fulfilling the indemnity condition to remove the fallen nature, he victoriously completed the model course to subjugate Satan. Moses, Jesus, and even the people of Israel would walk this course after the pattern set by J Jacob. Who made, who made the pattern for Moses to follow, for Jesus to follow? Jacob's course was the pattern. Later we will discuss, uh, we will study. So first we learn that God is working to restore his children according to a clear set of principles. This is what we learn, okay? The lessons that we learn. And if you can understand those principles, we can understand how God is working in our individual lives to prepare us. We are like Jacob. We are in the Cain position. Can we unite with our leader? Can we unite with our spouse? That's the issue right so this is not the story only right this is our daily life okay secondly we can see god's unchanging love for us unchanging love he continue untiring his absolute determination to save his fallen children no matter how many times we fail god does not give up and finally we can see how important it is that People fulfill their portion of responsibility. It's very important, huh? You, you learn that how important to fulfill our portion of responsibility, right? Through this story. God loves us and is working to save us. He wants to save us. But we have the responsibility. We don't want to be saved. That's a problem. We ignore God. We reject God. We don't do our portion of responsibility. Our part is to first demonstrate faith in God. And second is to overcome our fallen nature. First, demonstrate faith in God. Second, remove our fallen nature. Our tendency to rebel. 
and support that person whom God has chosen to respect him, represent him. We have the feeling sometimes, right? Rebellious against our central figure, against our leaders. If you can overcome, you are victorious. Like whom? Like Jacob. Thank you for joining me in this lecture and the next sessions we will discuss more at the history and then the time of the Moses. So I think you are so amazing listeners and I enjoyed uh, uh, teaching in these sessions. Very quiet, right? You're very li li good listeners, right? Because your, uh, your microphone is mute. That's why you are very good listeners. If unmute, you might be very noisy, right? <laughs> okay, thank you very much for listening and God bless you. Let me just end with the short prayer after this uh, uh, lecture, okay? Our heavenly parents, through parents of heaven and earth and humankind, thank you so much for this amazing truth that you have given through our beloved true parents. We can feel with ourselves of the body that how you have been lovingly working for us to save us. You have been a parent. We are so sorry. We are so ashamed that during the history, even now, the people are accusing you. Such amazing parents, heavenly parents, they are amazing you because they don't know how big is your heart, heavenly parents. We are so sorry. We are so sorry if sometimes we are unfaithful to you and sometimes we are rebellious against you, rebellious against our leaders, heavenly parents, rebellious against our true, beloved true parents. We are so sorry. Please forgive us. That's from our ignorance and our fallen nature. We are so grateful, heavenly parents, bottom of our hearts, that you have been taking care of us. You have been helping us that we can become happy people, that we can get rid of this hellish world, heavenly parents, that have been created through the Four Position Foundation centering on Satan, heavenly parents. Please be with us, with all our brothers and sisters that are joining in these lectures, that our life would become fruitful and we can really become closer to you by fulfilling our foundation of faith and foundation of substance. Thank you so much. I want to offer this prayer in my name, Rahim Christi, Blessed Center Family. Aju.